Hi, welcome back to my Ed Talk. We're going to talk about local anesthetics, pH and pKa. So what determines the onset of a local anesthetic? You got it, pKa or the acid dissociation constant. This concept was from our first week of CRNA school and it's coming back. And pKa is going to be really important because the pKa of a drug is going to determine how fast it's going to take effect. So all local anesthetics are weak bases with pKa's ranging from 7.7 to 9.4. So I know that we're injecting into tissue pH, but let's pretend that we're our tissue pH is 7.4. So what happens when we inject a weak base with pKa 7.7 to 9.4 into a physiologic pH environment like 7.4. Does the ionized or the non-ionized form predominate? You got it, the ionized form. We're going to use Maggie's cart illustration here. So for example, lidocaine's pKa is around 7.9. So because it's 7.9, it hasn't crossed the 7.4 threshold yet, so the ionized form predominates. The problem with that is that in order to cross the lipid bilayer of the cell membrane, we have to have the non-ionized take place. Um, we have to have the non-ionized form um, in order to cross this lipid bilayer. So in theory, um, the closer the local anesthetic's pKa is to the environment's pH, the faster the onset. So for example, lidocaine, whose pKa is 7.9, is going to work faster about 5 to 7 minutes than bupivacaine, whose pKa is around 8.1, and that it's going to take about 10 to 15 minutes. So as you can see, the closer the pKa is to the pH of the tissues or the environment that you're injecting into, the faster the onset. Now, but what can we do to make the non-ionized form more available. What can we do to move this car over here to the more non-ionized form so that it can cross the plasma uh, lipid bilayer, sorry, and take effect? Well, we can add sodium bicarbonate. And sodium bicarbonate is going to speed the onset of the local anesthetic by pushing the pH above the pKa of our local anesthetic. So before, where uh, our local anesthetic was over here, um, before the pH, now when we inject bicarb, it's going to push the pH higher above the pKa so that the non-ionized form predominates. So once the non-ionized form is able to go through, then it becomes ionized and it can finally bind to the receptor to take its effect. So how much of bicarb can we give to um, certain local anesthetics? Well, the max bicarb we can put into lidocaine is one milliliter of bicarb per 10 milliliters of lidocaine. So if we have 20 milliliters of lidocaine, we can put two milliliters of bicarb, sodium bicarb. Um, with bupivacaine, we are going to give 0 0.1 milliliters uh, of sodium bicarb per 10 milliliters of bupivacaine. So if we have 30 milliliters of bupivacaine, we're going to give 0 0.3 milliliters of bicarb into that mixture. So what happens if we ignore these max concentrations or max um, additives and add too much bicarb? Well, our solution is going to precipitate and we're not going to be able to use it anymore. So we never want to inject a precipitated solution into anybody. Um, thanks for watching. Hope that helps.